Hi guys, Dr. Sean here. Hope everyone's doing okay, staying safe out there. Well, today I have a fun little topic for you. We're going to be talking about dental grills. So you may have seen some of people, especially some celebrities, sport some of these when they smile. Now, grills are made up of many different types of materials. The most common are gold or silver or even something blinged out um, with diamonds. So when it comes to grills, it's mainly about something that's more showy and out there and gets people to notice. So when the ones that you usually see that celebrities have they're usually restorations that just snap over the existing teeth. However, there are some were, which is not that cosmetic, there are some that are actually permanent, as if you were basically preparing uh, a patient for a bridge, for example. Another type of grill is one that's at home. It can be done at home. It's a self-grill kit, if you may. Um, but uh, obviously, I don't know how that would be uh, as uh, cosmetic as the one that the lab actually makes, but there is that option. Um, obviously, it's the one that's a little bit more inexpensive. Now, depending on the type of grill that is made, there may be some risk factors and hygiene issues. So, I mean, it's just a foreign object that's just you just basically most likely snap into your mouth. So there's going to be some issues with that. Grills can stop your mouth from closing all the way. Now, when you snap these into your mouth, onto your existing teeth, obviously when you close your mouth, you're going to be hitting it. So it won't be able to allow you to close your mouth all the way, which then can affect, your obviously, your bite and affect your TMJ. Um, another issue is that they may not fit extremely well, especially sometimes people have them made by their jeweler um, versus a lab, and the jeweler's not going to be able to fit it as well to the existing teeth as the actual dental lab would. Also, the ones that don't fit extremely well would be the ones that you do at home, um, at home kit as well. Now, with these snap-ons um, and other types of grills, they usually extend into the gum tissue, which can, which already is a hygiene issue, it can cause inflammation and therefore possible bone loss. Now, the process of making a lab fabricated um, removable grill is to first take um, an upper and lower impression and a biorestoration. Then the lab can take those impressions and fabricate the grill um, in the chosen material. But now for permanent grills, we have to basically do as we would prep for some sort of bridge. We would have to numb the patient up and prep the teeth um, that will hold onto the grill. Then the same impressions will be sent to the lab for fabrication. Now permanent grills, just like bridges, are more prone to decay due to the fact that it is not removable. So food can get trapped and it's difficult to clean out. Um, versus the snap-ons, you just snap, you take them out, you clean your teeth, and you can snap them back in. So they're a little bit more hygienic. So for more hygienic reasons, I would recommend a removal grill. Also, to remove the grill before each meal and make sure you floss and brush your teeth before placing it back on really helps with the hygien hygienic aspect of it. So lastly, most importantly, I would say before thinking about having any type of grill fabricated, you want to get a consult with an actual dentist. They can inform you about the types of grills and the materials used so you can make an informed decision. Okay. Well, it was great chatting with you guys today. I can't wait for our next topic. Um, and if you have any questions, let us know. Have a great day.